a new and, and new and expanded view of our of our drafting tool. I love it. I love the work that he put all this. This was all done by yeah, him. Yeah, this looks good. It's so great. But as you said, the Amani ban for sure, exactly what we expected. Um, and Deception have probably done a little bit of their research, knowing who is on the enemy team. That is a targeted ban against Lolaroos if I ever saw one. <laughs> Well, I mean, yes, it's a targeted ban against Lola Ruse, but the I think it's it's we've come to the to the agreement between all the teams. When you're playing Siren Strand, when you're playing Sanctum, you ban Amani. On the other on the other maps, they seem to be feeling out whether Amani is 100% uh, uh, auto ban. Mm -hmm. But on, on Sirens, yeah, she's always out. And and but the interesting thing is the Ramsey ban. Yeah, this is actually the first Ramsey brand I th uh, ban I think we've seen in any tournament so far. Um, he does seem to have like a. There are sometimes he kind of shows up and has like this priority pick, or or just appears somewhere in the team draft eventually. But we've never seen him banned, so very interesting. The insta lock Margrave though for deception. Yeah, the it's just such a safe first pick. It rounds out your draft immediately. It, it covers so many defensive options and so many offensive options for initiation. Yeah. It's hard to ever argue, argue against picking Margrave first. Yep. And just as a reminder for everybody, uh, in this tournament, we are allowing mirrors. We're allowing uh, ditto matchups. So we can very easily see a Margrave on both teams, uh, which right now they are hovering. Um, and also a little bit of a reminder, uh, since it was only mentioned once yesterday, maybe twice, Rutger is banned due to bugs not being quite fixed yet, and the Kajir being banned because generally he's just way too overtuned right now, um, and it's super, super easy to abuse that damage output to win uh, the tournament. So he's just he's just banned. They're banned. We will not see them. <laughs> yeah, there's there's an argument for having Kajir blanket banned. I think that the players would probably generally agree that Kajir blanket ban is a good idea. He's he just kind of he's just doing too much right now. Yeah, I think if it wasn't officially banned, I know that probably a good amount of the players would have at least been like, okay, we should just gentlemen's agreement to not play Kajir right now because he's kind of right. ridiculous. Either that or he has to be banned or picked. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm expecting this Margrave to lock in. I'm wondering what their second pick is going to be though, because Team Ad is still open, Beckett is still open. Of course, all of our supports are available. Um. Actually, this is a this is something to bring up. Uh, last week, the other tournament, we saw a lot of like Ashlyn priority, and sometimes she was even banned. We actually have not seen her at all on a team. At least the teams that we, uh, at least the games that we covered on on stream, we've just like she's kind of just gone under the radar. Apparently, um, it seems like one one explanation for that can be the actual drafting environment where you don't have dittos in in the last tournament, so being able to kind of isolate your opponents on oh, there's the margrave or the team at uh hover now and they're both locked so we do have margrave team at yep but you can one. make the argument that picking ashlyn early and banning out sven or even like double pick like there there are real reasons to pick the ashlyn early because you can strand your opponent that's very true um, and it might just be that teams prefer the sven comps yeah in, in the uh, ditto environment it's looking like it might possibly be a full ditto uh, team versus team here so far with the team at and the Sven being hovered right now. Oh, and an Ashlyn. I brought it up. It's like yep. they can hear me. No, they haven't locked it in yet. But it would be really interesting. Nah. Yeah, there's the Sven. Locking in Sven for sure. And Siren Strand, very strong pick considering immediate access to a jump pad without any sort of investment. You can use that to get up to D point. You can use that to help your team escape. Uh, pre and post clash D point, I might add. Um, just Sven's got everything. <laughs> like we can never say enough how good Sven is in this game. Just how good of a character he is. He literally does everything that you want from a support. And he's extremely rounded. Mm -hmm. It just <laughs> well, he's round and rounded. Yes, I agree. Yep. Yep. So what are, what are we what are we thinking off the gimmick side right now? Do you I think? Mean... Sven Beckett or, or Sven, uh, Sven some kind of assassin. It's probably going to be a Sven. With Margrave team at, you tend to lean a little bit more towards the Sven than the Ashlyn. Um, you've already kind of picked that team at that wants to sit back and, and plunk away instead of 
the Ashlyn, while she's good in the in you know the defensive kind of clunky comps, mm -hmm. you really she thrives in the brawl comps where everyone's taking damage at the same time and she's healing a bunch across the entire team. I'm wondering if we're gonna see uh, the sneaky kind of Mozu or uh, perhaps bringing in like Wu for this team. Wu is really really good, um, kind of pulling in the team at and making her basically forced to use her escape to get distance because the rockets don't the rockets don't lock super super well when you're right in melee of somebody because they kind of launch above her and then they have to like curl around and most of the time they just end up falling to the floor doing nothing um but a, a, a woo here would be really good against that um i don't feel like mozu right now is a good uh choice i would figure that might have been drafted a little bit later just because there's only real like there's only one real ranged threat right now on the deception side um i mean there's a very good argument for mozu into team at Sven. yeah uh, she she's very uh, efficient at taking down both of those characters she can beat a team she's one of the few range that can beat a team at and just sitting there and fighting you because of her reflex yeah um she's definitely she very also safe. is yeah right one also one of the few range that can punish a sven uh on their jump pad out in in their in those rare situations where mozu can kind of do those aggressive tps and not get punished for it <laughs> she can actually like i've i've seen that i know i talk about anubis's mozu all the time i've seen this happen a million times when he's playing that character yeah where someone is low hp they jump pad out and they're out of stamina and he can just finish the kill yeah uh Charnock, Mozu locked in. We now have a, a ton of wound killing on the board for gimmick. Yeah. There's a ton of creature pressure there. There, I mean, all three of those characters are are can just melt through creatures and wounds. And this actually looks very similar to the last game that we saw yesterday, or at least the game that uh, me and Northstar saw yesterday, where gimmick actually drafted four ranged characters with a Margrave on Ghost Reef. Not quite the same map as Siren Strand, but still. I feel like it can pull off it's some It's even fleshness. better on Sirens. Yeah, probably. Like. Deception Cause, locking cause in... You can just play the rotate game. That's true. Deception locking in Roland and Taito almost immediately finalizing their team. Very, uh... I, kind of very honestly, I really team, like actually. the Roland pick. Yeah. Roland's very strong. Roland, the, he has two very viable ways to build him. You can do the more mid-range build with the scatter shot, or you can do, honestly like a really good Amani impression with his long range shot. Yeah, the slug um, shots are the, the slug shots seem to be a fan favorite recently. They do super super well. Uh just a ton of damage each bullet and then there's a second tier upgrade that makes it so they have no fall off damage, which is ridiculous. Yeah. It's He does a crazy good Amani impression on this map. Kind of insane. Um and where you kind of lose me is the Taito to be honest with you. I it, I don't necessarily disagree uh or or yeah i don't necessarily disagree i do think that this makes a good well-rounded like very quote-unquote standard traditional composition of the you know the front line the support two ranged and an assassin to finish off kills i i think it's a i think this is actually pretty nice an oru hover right now oru. just i mean run around the map and kill the creature yeah this is kind of what i would this is kind of what i was saying where they they're kind of thinking of drafting this four range composition uh if they don't lock this in i would almost think that they need to put in some sort of like assassin slash finisher style character there's a lot of poke possibly here from gimmick side definitely for sure uh both single target and aoe but uh right now i'm kind of worried that gimmick won't be able to close out kills especially considering that they have a spend like clutch save right now i'm not i'm not so concerned about the closing out kills range characters do so much damage in this patch that someone steps up for half the second for range on the enemy team and their health bar is just gonna turn into ether yeah um the what i'm more concerned about is picking this oru i didn't like the title pick beforehand Okay, the Ashland pick I like a lot more. I do picking like Ashland this too. Picking this or raises picking or raises the value of Taito yeah. like tenfold. And Ashland he is now has locked in. Okay, yeah, picking a fourth range there, increasing Taito's targets by twenty five percent of who we can actually go on is 
very, very impactful. Now, he can still go on an Ashlyn, but the idea behind the Ashlyn is she's going to make it generally harder for the Taito to kill anybody on your team. Already trying to run this deep point. Yep. And it looks Lucky like... Tiger tries for one interrupt, but nothing comes of it. Just a lot of health loss, and he's in danger. So it actually, it seems like I've mixed up the teams right now. Gimmick is actually Lair inside, and Deception EU are Ori inside. Or, uh, or Gren side. So I'm going to switch that real quick. Right now, it seems oh. as though uh, Gimmick have decided to... Gimmick has reached D-point, and they've they've put points on it now. There's a big fight happening here on the F already. Yeah, Gimmick uh, kind of skipped D-point to try to get control... Or, sorry, uh, skipped G-point to try to get control over D early. But they fought the fight, and their tank died during it, even with the uh, slight player advantage at the beginning. And... Now we're 10 points ahead. Yep. They found a kill somewhere sneaky uh, on the map, maybe perhaps uh, before we were really able to officially join in. And uh, now they've got control of D, so they really just have to sit back. You know, they have to watch C. C coming up, about to capture that power. Uh, and Deception need to make some sort of move. They need to, they need to fully dedicate to go doing one or the other. Yeah, I think... Uh... They, I mean, it's a little early in the game to really start the rotations right now. You're missing a lot of your key upgrades that help you kill creatures. Yeah. But, uh, you know, very soon we should hopefully start seeing them trying to go around. Big leap. This is Lucky Tiger trying to start something as best as he can. He loses about half of his HP before anything gets going, though. Yeah, I'm thinking what they're trying to do right now is perhaps Margrave is just going in to open the creature and lure it over to the ledge so that the four range can just shoot it down. Uh, Ashland. Sorry, the three range can just shoot it down. Yeah, and, he, and then Ashley could very easily do that much better with Kador. Lucky Tiger going in yet again, just trying to trying desperately to start something. He's already half HP, and Kador is dying as well, so we're we're losing our healing. Oh no, I was now right. The, the creature is also half. Laundromat will pop his ult, and Lucky Tiger will fall shortly afterwards. That's 170 Rampage going down, but we're not done with the fight. They're trying desperately to get out, but Tylad will go down before that happens. No. And now we're in a pretty good spot to where we could push their creature or get damage on this wound. Okay, that was my bad. The names were right the first time. I should have just trusted myself. <laughs> I was I was overthinking it. Deception is Lyran. Gimmick is Gren. My bad. So that means that Deception actually get this first push. And they immediately yeah, get the wound. Disappears. It's just gone. I think they team out it in. It was immediate. I feel like it wasn't moving. And then all of a sudden it was just boop. Bye. Bye. First wound. Question is now can they get out? It looks like they're okay. The Sven jump bad for extra safety. Big Charnacle. Charnacle goes down. But they're already out of the area. Yeah, they're gone. They're, they're out of it, there. Charnacle just feels so weak nowadays, you know? The the burst damage just doesn't do anything. It, it's good for wound killing, but in a fight, it's so underwhelming. Laundromat feeling worse for wear, but Floof, goes, uh, Floof takes a kill on the enemy Ashlyn before he can go down. And he is healing up on the bloomer. Yeah. This so big, this fight's like looking worse and worse for Grenside with oh, a Charnock low. Charnock's it's out. down by the Margrave. Yeah, Margrav using that charge just to get back out of there. He had plenty of health still either way, but it's better just to take what you have. Now Deception have two kills. And uh, we haven't even gotten to the second rotation of power yet. Like, this will this will be a full 100 if it just goes all the way to D. But they're pushing back in anyway. They, they want to find more. They seem to have found their stride here with Laundromat backing up, but doesn't look very scared, to be honest with you. He's got another stun and could go back in on this very squishy back line. Two of them are half HP already. And there he goes, trying for it. One of them fell off the cliff, and they won't get hit, but he'll find Ashlyn anyways. Just this, this constant pressure on both sides right now. Both teams are, like, being very smart to not actually fully commit into enemy territory. And, uh... Deception will just take the kill that they found there in that middle fight and go back to D. This is very smart by them. They they know that they just have to wait. And once again, Gimmick is not going for this side interrupt. They're just letting C capture. I don't even know if they know it's a bloomer. A bloomer could die really fast. Yeah, it, it feels like they're almost not certain that they can kill the creatures fast enough before the rotation comes through. Part of this rotation comp is you do have to kind of stall your opponent for a moment. 
um, do something like what Lucky Tiger is doing at the moment, and then instead of committing your range to it, get them out and it's, do that rotation really quick. But, it's taking so long to get done, though. Yeah, Laundromat finds a three-man on the back line, but he's got no backup, so he's got to get out of there. Roxaseroth will come in and try to save him, and he doesn't even need the help. Laundromat just poking with the Margrave ult, apparently. I'm not necessarily sure what that Margrave ult was looking to accomplish. Like, I mean, I guess if they wanted to confirm one more kill, but they could have just let D capture, because they used the Sven focus too, so there wasn't really any benefit from doing all that. I'm wondering if he's thinking Hypnotic was going to come in with them. Uh-oh, what is going on here? <laughs> we're, we're right in the map. Oh, Back it's... to the action, the wound's being taken down very quickly. And the team that will fall shortly after Gren hits the for uh, hits his forehead on the ground. Mozuwa will try to punish, but not much damage actually comes from it. An enemy team is getting out as quickly as they can. Roxaseroth doesn't seem to have a jump pad Good to save leap. himself just yet. Oh, nice. Laundromat, though, is the, is the target of choice at a quarter HP, trying to find his way out with the charge. He's just... He's just out of there. The the uh, deception team is working so well together as to just keep their uh, keep their just melee people alive. You know, the, the a lot of this focus seems to be going on Margrave, but it's because they're spacing so well. Margrave's really the only one that's ever in any sort of line of fire. Like sometimes Sven is, but Sven is Sven's also got a lot of health, so you can't really yeah, chunk him that well. Straight into the is the idea of the Margrave where he, he wants to sit on the front line and take that damage and. He is. He's doing it while his team is getting stuff done, which is the important yep. thing. Lucky Tiger, oh my gosh, that's a lot of damage. Highlight has to pop it to get out of there. And no one dies from it, but that was scary. Yep. And it, it, Laundromat seems to be... It, it just seems like backup from his team is coming through a lot more consistently. So now we're um, finally seeing these rotations happen, but it's Deception that are pulling the trigger. Staying a little bit too long, but this it's should get out no low problem. Fight. Laundromat is in a little bit of danger here. He's already used his charge. His leap should be coming up, but he uses it aggressi aggressively. A Lucky Tiger will fall. He's just trying. I don't even know how Laundromat got out of there. He had nothing to his name. Yeah, Lucky Tiger's trying so hard to find these potential picks, but now he's just staying too long. He's trying to do what he's trying to do what Deceptions Margrave is doing, but it's not working. So now Deception wondering... have a kill ahead and still control of D. We haven't particularly been following this Taito very much. I'm wondering if he's kind of going around and just disrupting the back line in these fights. He probably uh, is. He's definitely been flanking a whole lot, kind of not staying with the immediate, uh, not staying with the media pack of deception, which is smart. That's kind of what you want an assassin to do. Um, but it, they're they're communicating super super well. You know, whenever whenever deception decide to commit to fights, I feel like Taito is actually just there like they know he knows when to go and he knows what to look for lucky tiger is trying to stop this bloomer on the side and hypnotic's going to respond here this is what he should what really the ranged of his team should be doing but on the other side they're trying to initiate in the d point and this feels like a little bit too little too late as the team adult comes down and ashlyn will just disappear off the screen yeah, there's... They have to get out of there immediately, and Hypnotic finds another team, uh, uh, finds Yusand in the bag. I mean... It looks like a bleed's going through on him, and he'll fall shortly afterwards, and it's 100 to 60. Yeah, there's three people. I mean, they'll be up in time to defend this, but, like, is this going to be three pushes, three wounds? <laughs> is this really that one-sided? I'm a little surprised, to be honest. But let's see this if they is... can make it done. It... There, there must be something more going on here that we're not seeing. It's where possible. The, it just feels like the damage is not coming through on Deception side. In just any way, a lot of things going on. This wound actually defense seems to be going pretty well so far. Deception lose somebody. Margrave has to retreat. Margrave actually two dies. kills off to protect the wound now. Three. This one's not going off and Roxaseroth dies shortly before Gren gets back up. So that power is not going to them. But that leaves open a very defenseless D point if they want to try this push, and they will be coming in shortly afterwards. This could be Lucky Tiger. This could be the game-changing moment right now if they kill this creature and then oh, we're clipped into the wall, <laughs> into the ceiling. <laughs> Siren Strand, man. Ace of Spades is like a quarter HP in the middle of that fight, and he will go down shortly after that creature hits a quarter HP. So that push didn't really even find much damage onto that D point. Yeah, Deception now super, super low. Or sorry, Gimmick now super low on the back. And Margrave's here. here for the punish. They're in. 
They're fighting it's, kills in their yeah, own territory. 60 to 0 right now. Only A captured. 70 to 20. This is crazy. They're actually going to kill this creature. A 60 point lead. <laughs> when you have that little of a health bar left. This is a this is a shutout. An absolute shutout for Deception right now. Yeah. I've been I, I mean this the the triple range comp I think totally does work on Sirens. I think that I think we've kind of misplayed our misplaced our positioning in the game. Like we we've we've kind of uh forgotten what we're supposed to be doing here. Yep. Uh, they, I think they almost did the opposite of what they were supposed to do, where they were sending their Margrave to a to a single point, and everyone else was going around. I mean, this is very uh, to, to the to the point where everyone else was. <laughs> like, I mean, this is very smart right now of of gimmick to be attacking this creature that uh, they actually killed the creature, so it didn't capture. But now they actually have to secure this fight with nobody yeah. dying, and it just, it just doesn't feels, work. It feels impossible at this point. It's just, yeah, too little, too late of all things that needed to be done. I would have liked if they had pulled the trigger just a little bit faster for some of these ideas. Um, but perhaps, perhaps game two. Uh, perhaps we'll kind of see maybe a, maybe with a map that they're more comfortable on or something in their favor. They'll be able to show us a little bit more. Deception yeah. moving in. They'll close this out. It should really be no problems. Absolutely. Right. Just, yeah, there's, there's, this just game gone. plan, I think, needs to be looked at again from their side. And they need to think about what they were trying to accomplish. I, I don't hate Ghost Reef. You know, the more I play on Picaro, the more I like Ghost Reef. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so valid, though. Um, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> So we're jumping right back into the draft here. It is now, uh, are they staying on the same teams? That is a good question too. Uh, yeah, that is a, another good question. Well, in the situation where it is, uh, gimmick would get the first ban and deception. Oh no, never mind. There's they're swapped. What am I thinking? Uh, gimmick going to go ahead and ban the. Sven. They did not like the Sven giving that escape for the Margrave every single time, which is very valid. Yeah, and I think it's arguably even, like, not the jump pad. Sven itself is is arguably even better on Ghost Reef than on Sirens. Yeah. The you Obviously, the jump pad's not as useful, but that's not even close to the best thing about the character. I, I, I have to agree with that, honestly. Um, it's just... Sven, Sven has just so much that is incredibly valuable, and he's good on every map. He's good on every team. Uh, it just there's not really a reason to not pick him if at all possible, unless you just feel like you don't really need a support in your team composition, which we have seen. But uh, I mean, even even if you feel like you don't need one, you probably should pick it anyway. And I was about to bring up the Amani ban right. here. This is probably confirmed for sure. Deception just don't want to deal with it. Oh, it's Ooh. okay. The Roland swap over. No, it's yeah. I'm not convinced with the Roland ban. Yeah, yeah, it's it's gotta be Amani for sure. Okay, yeah, that is confirmed. Locked in uh, as a ban at least. Deception just don't want to deal with the low ruse, uh Imani. There's just no way they're gonna let that slide. I don't blame them. I played against it a lot. It's it's not fun. <laughs> so, uh, gimmick. I mean. Honestly, probably just going to be another Margrave first pick. Just it's it's so universally good. It's hard to argue with the I guess like one of the very few arguments against Margrave first pick is that it makes it very clear what you're drafting towards. You're you when you pick Margrave, you're picking a traditional comp. Yeah, that's very fair. There's an Oru hover right now. I was also going to bring up the possibility of maybe a Paco, uh, but bringing Paco up first kind of has the same problem where if you want to play Paco, you kind of know how to fight against him. You could very easily draft against Paco, so it's hard to really bring him in as a first pick, but it is going to be Margrave in the end. That is locked in. Yeah, like I said, it's so hard to argue against Margrave. The on reef even more so he like there are so many places in reef where i feel like margrave stun is undodgeable 
it's really gross. He's so tanky. He's like the like I said, I hope I'm not hoping, but I'm kind of like part of me. There's a spark inside of me where I'm like, man, maybe they actually nerf Margrave in this balance patch because he is way too strong. <laughs> maybe like, they maybe they do a little Margrave bit. Nerf. Yeah, secret Margrave nerf. Uh, I mean, what would they do though? I don't feel like they're gonna nerf, lower their nerf numbers. His base, nerf his base armor because he has he has extra base armor right uh he's at 25 just like every every other heavy armor oh, okay but uh i mean he does get more well, yeah, armor nerf him from heavy armor that's uh, what I'm saying. i don't know he looks i feel like that'd be super weird i think it there are other be, things that be could really be weird but it's immediate lock in of zandora gnosis on the other side let's talk about that <laughs> this is not We've what seen i expected zandora gnosis on reef before yes okay. we have i'm not saying that it's not what i've expected but this comp has been shown to not only work but actually have a lot of especially against margrave uh this is this seems to be a really good answer to margrave because he jumps in and if he ever gets knocked up by the gnosis he's dead by the time he hits the ground in theory at least for sure I'd we've seen it a million times with this comp it's not that i'm surprised it's zandora gnosis it's i'm surprised that it's zandora gnosis on a deception team because I know that Northstar might be playing right now, or maybe he might be in the second series of Deception squeak this uh, squeak the series out, which it does look like it's currently in their favor. So I don't know if he meant I don't know if he meant this game or or actually the next series. But I know that he does not like these two characters. So right now he's rolling in his grave if he's on this team, uh, and that's just kind of I don't know. Maybe they're maybe they're believers now. But going back to gimmick that, side. I don't know if you watch League of Legends esports. I do. I do. Okay. Have you seen that clip of, I think it's Perks, where he, he picks Bane mid. Mm -hmm. And he's like trying to convince his team where he's like, guys, guys, it's a win. It's a win. It's a win. And, his, and all four of his teammates are like rolling their eyes, scoffing at it. Like that's North Star right now. Just the opposite. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, why are you doing this? Um, <laughs> but <laughs> that's a good comparison. Gimmick on the other side here, immediately locking in Oru and Teamat. This is very safe. Um, they're they're kind of expecting Deception to pick like a third melee here to have this mini death ball. I was talking about this yesterday. Hovering the Ramsey, they're committing to it either way. But the Oru's got some good AoE lockdown with uh there's a clash talent that he has on his RMB that makes his cards pierce. Um, and then if everyone has Mark to the Beast, there's a simple I think it's only one point that you'd have to dip in. Uh, to the E upgrade where it'll daze, and then there's a second tier that makes it stun. Oh, They're going boy. full in! They're all in melee! I think this might be the first, if they do pick this and then, like, an Ashland afterwards, because the Sven got banned. This is this is actually a good reason to go Brawl Comp. This is um, so Death Volley right now. This is the first true Death Ball that I think we've seen casting together, right? Yeah, I think so. Paco so Paco's is smart. A great, Paco's a great pick into it. Paco is very smart right now. Yes. I've been saying, I think Death Ball, Death Ball we're, we're about to test it. I think Death Ball might be secretly OP and people aren't really playing it. Um, yeah. Because Margrave is busted in this patch. Ashlyn is busted in this patch. Gnosis feels like he does so much damage in this patch and can like absolutely nuke through single targets. And Zandora's not great, but when you put her in a comp where she's constantly hitting five people, that's that's one of Zandora's downside, is she's an aura character. Yeah. And she usually only hits two or three people with her auras. When you're in a death ball comp, you're hitting five people with your auras 24-7. Yeah, it's it's just, it's just so easy to kind of piece together why, in theory, it would work. I do think that there are a lot of good answers on gimmick side right now, just with the application of CC. Kind of the aoe potential both damage wise and lockdown wise um i'm wondering what their fifth pick is actually kind of looking at it and i'm wondering like i don't think they're gonna pick a support i think it might be ashland it's fifth pick ashland no, no no not deception for gimmick oh okay no i know i know what deception's fifth pick is gonna yeah. be uh i think the paco is smart and charnock as well yeah locking in it now that that was revealed there there are some good aoe answers here if Deception isn't careful, there is really good potential that Gimmick would just obliterate them with their AoE. Like, there is a lot of zone control with this team right now. It's... Paco, I don't know if that's the right pick. Okay. It is locked in, though. Paco, 
my problem with Paco is you're so you're going into a triple range comp, right? Yeah. As a, a brawly death comp, death ball comp, your plan is to hopefully outlast your opponents and whittle all of them down at the same time and, and use Gnosis to maybe kill one person at a time sometimes. But most of the time, you're looking to whittle them all down at the same time and just outlast them with your sheer stats. I think... Paco uh... has a lot of stats, but Ashlyn lets you survive way, way, way longer. Yeah, this is... um. I, I kind of have to agree with part of the chat going on right now. Uh... It's Ghost Reef. This is like a this is a very poke heavy map. There's no poke right now for deception. They have to fully commit to going into fights. And if it goes wrong, it's gonna go wrong really quickly. And we're not in the ground. Look at that. Yeah. Even better. That's another thing to look forward to, hopefully, as spectator fixes the next patch, but who knows? North Star will get a co well, they're already looking to to start this brawl comp off and they will lose their Xandor because of it. Yeah. Mar uh Gnosis will have to try to find his way out, but he's dead before he even gets out of the entryway. Yeah, this now is now we're thirty to forty. This is quite literally exactly what I said. It was just like if if they can't actually fully confirm those kills and it turns on a on a poor note. They uh they don't really have the way to get out, and we're we're this seeing is, that already happen. Yeah, this is this is kind of the uh, the way that they're going to start most of their fights. I think is just by starting to hit a creature because with five melee characters, they will still fall pretty quickly. Beam coming in from North Star, really just uh, taking them down with the good suck. Uh, really, really getting onto Margrave with it. Oh, it's North Star on Zandor. I didn't even notice. Yeah. That makes Can it he so get much Rainbow worse. Dash with the beam? Possibly. <laughs> just look at the oh, pressure. I think he can. I think he can. Look at the pressure being applied here, though. They've somehow made it even, despite losing that fight pretty, um, pretty decisively. And they're just backing up. They're fine having a seventy to seventy. They've got control of D with an obelisk right now, uh, but that'll probably get quickly cleared out in the yeah, meantime. Not very long. And uh, they have rested back ten power from their opponents, so we're even now. Yep. Yeah, this will quite literally come down to if they can find a kill or whoever stalls long enough. And considering that gimmick has our, or sorry, that deception has already shown, they don't, they're not afraid of charging in. They are not, but they'll be the ones to give a power over first. Now the question is, can they make this 100 100 before Liren actually hits the ground? Northstar is going to try to start hitting the creature, and that might be the secret to this fight, but it's not really happening. It seems a lot of low players on deception side. Yeah, they're, they're kind of just wanting to leave. I'm actually a little surprised. It seemed like the creature was the perfect choice. You know, it might have just, you know, it would have gotten a 100 shield. And you could argue, like, don't kill the creature until after uh, because you want to get that power. But at the same time, you're also eliminating more wound damage and you're getting a creature Spike off starting the field. before Liren even gets back up. And Paco will get really low trying to get out. And then nothing really, really comes from the Zandora microwave beam. Yeah. This was a... It was a little interesting, I think, that Gimmick didn't actually go for that push. Like, yeah, they were really low, but that happened before Gren even crossed the battlefield. I feel like they got healed up pretty quickly and could have just snuck around. But, uh, decide just to play it safe. I think they're, they're gonna... They're a lot of their efforts into their uh, obelisk on the mid there. Yeah. And it falls anyways. I think they're... Going all the way around for G. <laughs> this is... This is uh, the fear of what I expected to happen. Just going all the way in. And now look how scattered they are. No one's getting a Zandora folk, or, or anywhere. She's back on E. Roxaseroth pops their ultimate. Try to try to just get out because Laundromat's too low to continue this fight. And Roxaseroth's not in better health either. The, uh, the Cyclops looks like... No, Ruse will collect him with a quick little pop shot. And everyone else has to get out trying to fear for their lives. Laundromat's not safe he's yet. He's so with a low. Bit of help on his bar. Nice little healing orb, but he still needs to get out of there. Still in danger. Not quite out yet. Okay. It looks like he will just saunter his way out of there. Very close. They they still end up a little behind overall in the end. Surprisingly, only one kill. <laughs> just by being so scattered and separated. But a nice, nice escape, good support from the Zandora to kind of give him a little bit of extra health every now and then. Uh, but Gimmick? Gimmick's still ahead in this next rotation. They might just take this really, really slowly. 
They're still keeping this very even, even though it looks like these fights are kind of getting blown out for deception. And they will try to catch this Margrave, who has no jump anymore. Not really a safe way out, and he will fall shortly afterwards, so that will tie us up. And Margrave's trying to find the Charnark on the way out. Or sorry, Gnosis is. Nothing will come of that, but we will get a collection on Ramsey shortly after the fight ends, making us back to 70 and 80. Yep, and with D-Rotation coming back up, I mean, Gimmick just have to really make sure that Deception don't get this uh, this middle point, which currently they are in contention to do so. The Obelisk does prevent them from, uh, f uh, rather does prevent Deception from capturing. So uh, right now, it's really just a stalling game. Yeah, it's kind of... It's really dangerous for this Brawl Comp because if they go in at any point now and lose two players, now it's a push. Lucky Tiger is getting really low. Oh. And being, getting followed and completed by Ruse. And now Northstar has to make his way out on low HP while his teammates try to find what they can on the rest of the fight. Ace of Spades is following them in, but he's not really getting much damage on the tanks. So now they're actually just going to go in and manually capture this. Gimmick, nope, get interrupted. Trying for the collection gets interrupted. Now Charnock's really low in enemy territory. We'll have to run through the enemies to make his way back. Sandora's trying to microwave him down, but he'll be able to be safe. Yep. And now it's 190 for Liren. They actually do find the two kills that they need in that fight. Yep. Overall, uh, overall it came down to kind of whoever could uh, stall faster. And I do think that E was interrupted somewhere in the midst of that. It looked like actually the C point bloomer did capture. And they're committing to this. All the melee want to go in. They can actually kill this pretty quickly with five melee on top of it. Super the problem fast. is if Charnock can kill them even quicker and those health bars are disappearing. Floof will try to make his way out, but he dies shortly before he actually gets around the corner. North and now Star they're can't saving do North Star for after that wound, and he knows what's going on. That's smart. He knows what's happening here. This is very smart of uh, of gimmick to find that. Good defense on their part. Very good uh, use of the Charnock. Charnock alone makes these pushes so incredibly difficult because they're all melee, so they're all taking damage from Hot Hail. There's just, there's nothing they can do about that, literally. Yeah, a little under breathing on them. A little bit of like pressure of the damage was trying on breath there. 100%. It's gotta be. Looks like Margrave's a little bit in the wrong side of town here. They are starting to death fall a little bit more with five players on top of each other. And, and the uh, blue Margrave will get a little bit of uh, rewards for that and find his way out. No doubt he would have died if there was not a Zandora healing aura. And Laundromat will fall to the Oru shortly afterwards, leaving us in a 20-40 uh, situation here. They're a full rotation ahead. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> this is not working as well for Deception as they wanted to. I mean, granted, they did get that push just now, but I feel like <laughs> I feel like that was a very clutch situation that really probably shouldn't have happened. Um, just a little bit of taking advantage of of finding gimmick mispositioning a little bit and i i don't know if they're really going to be able to keep that up i feel like uh i feel like they're going to be playing safer and safer as the game progresses big they're fight happening on, on e. this e point now ace of space is getting really low and he'll get followed by the zandora a little bit of microwave beams going down but not enough damage to actually find him so north star will have to find his way out of the fight yeah they keep trying to go for this oru and oru seems to have his focus every single time so they spend all their resources trying to get him down and then suddenly he's floating above literally not able to be hit and also doing a lot of damage <laughs> while deception now have no cooldowns to continue the fight and are forced to retreat every time it just it just keeps happening again and again. Gimmick still have control of D right now with the obelisk. Deception are forced to fight them, and they have to somehow find three kills, at least, in order for uh, the C point to come back around and give them the push without anybody dying. Yeah, I don't I don't think that uh, you even fight around this D point if you're uh, if you're well oh gosh if you're if you're Gren side at this point yeah. Like, you, you let them kill this obelisk, try to stop them from collecting and wait for the rotation. It's like, because their midpoint is so, uh, their mid fight is so strong. Yeah. I mean, they can just kind of stay on these upper ledges and force the enemy to go all the way around and fight them. Because again, there's no poke. There's no poke on this team on a map that is centered around poking. 
Nice little charge Longer here. Mask, a little bit of damage on him, and the slam will finish him at, yep, uh, they after find all. Him. Now we're 60 to 90. We are interrupting Ooh, E, but how long can that actually last? Like it tigers out. Collect. And yeah, gimmick find it first. We do interrupt E for long enough to get to a 90, but it still looks like it's going to be an auto wound here. It, mm, it probably is, yeah. That probably is accurate. It is just the first wound. It's the fourth push of the game. Um, if it's not auto wounded, it'll be very, very close. But we'll see for sure. It is auto. Yep. You were right. Not that I didn't believe you. It just sometimes I've seen weird things happen with these with these wounds that the auto indicator go off and it's not auto. Sometimes the text yeah, doesn't line up. Yeah, it's a little more consistent. Yeah, it's very true. Big fights happening again in E. That's a big Paco ult that went off and. Uh... Uh, the Gnosis is going to fall afterwards. I, al I almost always mess up Gnosis and Margrave for some reason. I Sometimes uh, I, I see that. To, yeah, Paco's trying to go into the mid, but he'll get T-Man ulted for his uh, troubles there. And followed by an Oru, killed shortly afterwards. And now around this corner, we have two players just slamming into an enemy Paco who will fall very quickly. Yeah. 30 to 50 for Gren now. I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I just I have to bring it up again. Gimmick are going, or sorry, Deception are going super hard on these fights into enemy territory. Gimmick is holding their own and peeling well for each other using their AoE. And then Gimmick is forced to run away and they can't. <laughs> they use so many resources, so much stamina just to get in. And then they just get turned on once they realize that they no longer have a fight in their favor. They will find a kill on Ruse and on the Charnock. That's two players that have gone down, and Gren will return with a kill on Laundromat. Yep. So they have to get out at this point. As soon as one player falls, it feels like the fight's already done. Uh, Oru's going to get a clap on this Margrave. He will fall shortly afterwards, and it's a 70 to 100. Yep. This push could be really dangerous, because they might have... Well, they used Team Adapt ult shortly before, but they might have Charnock ult. Yeah, Deception are finding these little moments of glory and getting picks, but again, it's just every every single time they get answered back by gimmick getting at least one kill and sometimes even more so this is uh th this is something where deception have to find some other sort of game plan because it's not working it, it is not working teams are so defensive on ghost reef man they're not even trying for anything on this push yeah this is a uh, i mean i i can't imagine anything else honestly than taking it slow on on some of these ghost reef games I mean, at the very least, you have to position better, right? Like yeah. They just got the obelisk for free, basically, because they didn't position aggressively when they're when nothing could happen to them. I feel like gimmick is kind of utilizing this time to make sure that if they if they take it slow, then they basically guarantee a victory uh, once they are fully committed to the idea that uh, that Gren will do enough impact damage to basically have the victory be free just like hitting it a couple times and that's super easy to confirm with a charnock and an and a and a team at you know and, and or is no pushover either when it comes to wound damage right i'm not i'm not saying go in and and like try to kill the wound but like at least position a little bit better to, to have more to do immediately once the once the wound falls oh i know you have some aggressive positioning there you know? i know that we're having a little bit of a party happening over in c right now um this is little... I think they've decided that they don't want to fight their opponent anymore. Oh. They're they're slightly ahead on power and they can sit back and chill. Yeah, I was about to bring that now, up. The problem is That's probably why midpoint's coming. Nice little snowball here. Big Margrave ult comes out. Two Margrave ult back to back, but one of them was on a brawl comp and it hit four different players. That's quite a bit more impact than the first, and Ramsey will fall because of it into the Charnark ultimate. Now the power has Lots been even out. From Ruse as well. And now they're going to try to push into this blue Murray. They were saying, hey, you want to try to take a fight on here? We're here now. Yeah, this is the first time we've actually seen Gimmick go for an aggressive push like that. And they... Now, Deception are still 10 points ahead here. So they're, they're somehow coming out. But Ace of Spades will fall. Yeah, they actually... Bring them a 20. It's It was like they baited Gimmick to try and do what Deception had been doing the whole time. And it completely turned against them. Now they get a push... This is for sure an auto wound. I think even if it was a hundred shield, it would be an auto wound with how low that bar is Ooh. right now. <laughs> probably, it, it, it would be close, but it probably would be, yeah. And now this game is mostly about even. In the end, the the uh, the 
the main objective in the end is the number of wounds that you have even though deception have slightly less health on layer in right now it is still two to two wounds remaining so this this is about evened up and <laughs> this is Look at them running in circles. Yeah, they're just, they're just basically waiting. RNG around the rosy. Yep. This is a. Uh... <laughs> this is, this is some silly things going on now at this point. I mean. I mean they, I think it's right at this point. Yeah. They they don't have an Ashlyn to heal up the damage they take when they're trying to initiate, so they have to make them initiate on. Yeah, basically they have to wait for the initiation at this point. Yeah, it's it's like they kind of heard what I was saying. It's a matter of them just saying like, hey, these these pushes are not working. We're being super aggressive going into enemy territory. We've lost almost every encounter doing so. We should probably just wait until D comes up and then fight there. And that's basically yeah, their, what they're doing. Their midpoint control is, is super strong, so I think I agree with this. So right now, gimmick looks like they're under the impression I'm, I'm given the impression that they know that this is the case now and perhaps they're also just waiting until the rotations fully rotate all the way over to D and then they're going to stay on this yeah, high ground they might be accepting it. Yeah, they're going to stay on this high ground they're going to watch this long stalemate of both sides just sort of playing around or at least deception is playing around and, and gimmick will wait until they're forced to basically make a decision or they will guarantee lose the push sitting here for quite a while this is the beauty of gigantic sometimes yeah this is this is gonna be one of those games oh looks like we do have a fight starting some oh, the oh they found or we'll get caught out and die in the midpoint somehow that happened and now we're 10 points ahead this is exactly what they want you think they were waiting beforehand ladies and gentlemen now they're about to play ring around the rosie even harder yeah it's like or just stuck his nose a little too far and they punish him for it. I didn't even really see what happened. Just all of a sudden I heard a focus go off and then Oru was dead. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, what happened? <laughs> just watch this poke. Back to waiting on C. Yep. And this is, uh, this is one of the few times we would actually see a Gnosis not take the Taurus upgrade on his RMB. He's using the spears as basically their one and only projectile, aside from oh, the wow. snowball. So, uh, That's funny. It's, he hasn't taken the upgrade yet. So. Yeah, no upgrades at all. He's probably just saving them. Big fight's happening here in the middle. going on the Oru again. He seems to be consistently out of place, but this time the ultimate is there to save him. Just kind of use it defensively and also... Here comes a collection. Something's got to be done about this. They yep. will run in to try to stop it. I'm actually a little surprised that, that he stopped. It doesn't look like he actually got stunned or interrupted. I think he just stopped manually. He was a little afraid. But it was also Margrave. Okay, that time they actually nice did stun. Very smart. That was actually really close. That would have been their push capturing that. This can continue because if... I, I mean, if uh, Deception collect, then they'll get the push. Yeah. And the rotations are actually going all the way back to B and F. That's how long this push has taken. But if it doesn't get interrupted, like, Gimmick right now need to go over to B and, and interrupt that. And Ramsey is positioning to try and make sure that that doesn't happen. Going for the manual capture on D. Nope, he won't do it anymore. Deception, no. Interruption is not important to them. They're just going to take the 100-100 push here. Yeah. And it will go through, so a fight is inconsequ inconsequential at this point. Yep. Yeah. And I, I don't think that Deception will actually go for this push like they did last time. 100 shield while the second wound is still full health. That is certainly not something that they can... Uh, not certainly that they could commit to. And if they did, it would be just catastrophic. Like, we're talking full team wipe sort of effort here. So, yeah. They're going to stick by C. They're just going to keep spinning in circles around each other. And, uh, yeah. this is This is the game that we're watching, ladies and gentlemen. This no is, reason uh, to do anything drastic. Yeah, yeah, we can go ahead and just take a little time and watch some of these uh, upgrades. I wish we could see the order that they took them in, but uh, that is not the case right now. Um, yeah, firecracker about pretty uh, optimal. Counter with a with a weakness counter. Yep, pretty standard. No right click upgrade. I'd like to see the damage upgrade on that right click. Yeah, well, I actually that's a good call. Is this a? Yeah, that's a... They have started a fight here and started with two kills on the side of Deception. Team Matt will try to ult to collect some oh. on the back line. 
but the uh, defensive Paco ultimate catches too. And those are two players in a lot of danger now. Gnostic on a quarter HP will fall to the Ruse Plinks. And that's a pretty good fight for both sides, leaving us with only 10 in uh, on Deception. 40 to 30. Yep. So this is, again, another situation where Gimmick is just sticking their nose a little too far. Deception just collide all together on one person, rapidly kill them with all the melee. And then now they're just going to sit back and do even harder what they were already doing, just spinning around in circles at C point. Although they're a little more positioned this time, kind of in between, and maybe wanting to try to find some more uh, points here again. Uh, but back to the I think point. They can just continue what they've been doing. I mean, yeah. just chill out and let the uh, let, let Liren do the work for you at oh, this point. He wants to go in, but now he misses the sun. He's still really low on health. And yeah, they're just going to leave. Nice coverage from Deception to make sure that their Margrave gets out of there. He'll get healed back up by the Bloomer. And yeah. Um, but what I was going to say, I think the Margrave that we were looking at was actually gimmicks. So I don't think that taking the damage upgrade on RMB would have really been that good. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. But, well, uh... Then you should take Reflect. <laughs> you should have that already, probably. Yeah. Deception probably would work better with the Reflect... RMB. Gimmick could probably go for uh, the damage one. That's probably why it hasn't been talented at all, honestly. It's not really doing that much for them with five melee being on the team. And yeah, Deception D point power coming up right now. They just have to push... They don't have to fight this. They just have to stop the collect at this point. Well, I think right now they're just pushing, trying to push Gimmick back into their base, but they didn't even actually fully fulfill that now Gimmick can channel this power. Does get interrupted. But even grabbing Four D right now would only out. be 90. I don't think that clap actually kills anybody. We have do have some low players on the side of Deception, but no one really wants oh, to Oh, Gnosis is stuck! Other than the Gnosis getting body blocked really, really well there. And lots of damage coming out from Oro and Charnon. Nice combination. Disappear. And now we're 80 to 90. And this mid collection is a possibility. Yep. With Paco only on half HP trying to keep these three players away. Got interrupted. There's a Ramsey in the mid trying to stop Charnock as well. Yeah. Now there's an interrupt on the point and 80 to 100 push comes through. Yeah, E Gimmick point captured. really good. E point captured. There were only so many places they could be at once. And they, they had to somehow stop they had to somehow stop C from dying and anyone on C from dying, stop D from capturing, and stop E from capturing. That was a really, really tough call to make. So even at 90 shield, it does quite a good amount of damage. Deception, or sorry, Gimmick, once again, not really fully committing to going in here. Deception will take advantage of that by just clearing out the obelisk. They are. Oh, they are going in. Gimmick is looking to try to finish this wound and Deception is just sitting back and kind of letting it happen. They're all very low. It doesn't look like they will get it in the end, but they have to kill both the players. So the low. Yeah, that would have been dangerous to kind of let it sit. It was a team at, and we know team at does a lot of damage. Uh, I think I think that was a good call to not risk it and get those last couple points, because this means that they still have two buffers at least. It's a, <laughs> it's a close... And very sloggy, slow game that we've all we've all seen on Ghost Reef many times before. Yeah, this has turned into a much closer game than we thought it was going to be at the beginning. We thought it was going to be a blowout from one side or the other. Yeah, I think I think uh, Gimmick tried that one opportunity of actually moving in and doing what Deception were doing at the beginning of the game, but when that went so badly, they just did not do it again. Big charges coming in. Yeah, Deception nice fight is starting low. here with Ramsey starting off really low, having to get out before the fight really even gets going. And the Deception Paco popping a defensive ultimate to just get them out of there. Now Ruse is going around the back line. He saw that low health Ramsey and wants a taste of it. But he has but his... Paco's ready for him, already at a quarter HP. Oh, and they're going to follow him out with the Margrave Slam. He will fall. It's unlike Ruse to position that bridges. way. It's unlike Roos to position that way and get himself caught like that. I'm glad he still had his uh, his thruster to get on out of there, but the Margrave was on top of it and just kind of cut him off right where he landed. Secured that kill. Once again, Deception 10 ahead. This is now like the third... This is like the third power race in a row where we've seen one person on gimmick just goes too far, gets caught, and now Deception's ahead, and they're just willing to wait. Now, granted, the last push that we got, gimmick turned it around by finding a kill or two and also capturing D. So it could really go either way. 
I'm wondering, uh, you know, how long until we see maybe, like, maybe Deception kind of switches their play style again. Because they're now on essentially two tries, right? Yep. If they get down to one wound, there's a, a really good chance that Ruse is going to tell... I'm, I'm assuming Ruse is the team captain, or at least he's going to have a voice to say, Hey, I'm a team at, you're a Charnock, let's stack our ultimates and just kill this wound the next chance that we get. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they would actually save their focuses. It looks like Ruse is still trying to build his right now, and... and... Deception's playing smart here in the midpoint where they quite literally can't be seen unless they go a little too far. Gnosis all will come out. It doesn't even look like it really hit anybody. I might have missed seeing. I but don't think they're so. They're trying to collect in the midpoint and it will get interrupted by... Oh, it's not, not interrupted. The collection got does it. go through. 90 to 60 for Deception. That is a huge collection. Because on this next point, all they have to do is interrupt E now. Yeah. And they don't even have to do that. They can just go at 70 or at 80. But interrupting E and getting a 90 to 60 push can completely flip this around. Yeah. And it still looks it like it'll will still do a good amount. It still looks like it's going to do a good amount either way. But the real question is, are Deception actually going to commit again? Or will they wait? <laughs> just if, if they end up waiting, like, man... Man, how long is this game gonna be? We're we're I, we're gonna push like forty can. minutes now. Maybe they they might, but I think committing. Oh, they're to going this in. Is so dangerous. They are gonna give it a try. The Charnock is gonna put his AOE down immediately. Half health on uh, Gren means a lot of uh, space for them to make up for, and Gnosis will fall super easily. A defensive Paco ultimate will stop the attackers from getting any more damage down. They're but still this damaging is it. Falling really quickly. One HP on it, and it will fall with one second left. But after time, the Margrave will fall as well, leaving for ten uh, power on Liren's side. Somehow, they get the wound and the power on the way out. Paco is really low, trying to make his way out as well. It looks like he will fall in the end. Yeah, they, they do make it even. Ten. How in the that world? That was a very good push. How in the world did they fight through the Charnock Hot Hail and the Flame On? That is kind of wild. This is a really good like approach to kind of going in a little bit scattered, a little bit uh, like separated, you know, one at a time in a, in a sense. And even though some of them did die, like you can, you only have like Charnock's cooldowns are fairly long. He can only use them on one or two people if they all like move in like that. It was really, really smart play from Deception. Yeah, the Gnosis died immediately, but everyone else stick, stuck around for a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised that they actually got... Oh, what are they doing here? This is a different look. They're going all the way around for the G-point push, and they even faked the enemy team out. They thought they were going for F where the power collection was, but now they're completely on the Gren side of the map. This is quite an ambitious play because now the enemy team is set up for this fight and they have to run through them to get out. So the only way out is with fighting. A Gnosis assault will come down and this bloomer is almost dead immediately, but Gnosis will fall shortly afterwards and Ramsey. They're falling the apart. The team is just falling apart. It's 60 to 90. The Rampage will go off somehow at 90 power. They lost that fight so bad. Uh, they got... That was crazy. That was, uh, that was not the play that they needed to do right now. I would have rather they committed just to getting F. I think that those close quarters, uh, that, that close quarter tunnel would have been a little bit better. Maybe if they just positioned around not getting in the hot hail. Because they, they knew that Charnock didn't have focus. Like he just used it to defend the wound. I think they could have fought at F and probably killed it and stolen the power if they won that fight. I think that they could have fought at G if they just started killing the creature immediately when they got there. They stood there for a good, like, 5-10 seconds because they baited the rotation to F of the whole, like, all of gimmick went to F. And they were positioned for F, expecting that fight to come, but they didn't even realize they had gone all the way around and were at G. Yeah. So if they just started hitting it, they could have had a good five seconds where that bloomer would have been dead before they even got there. This is one of those moments where I really wish we had like action live replays. Cause yeah. I think, I think another major contribution to how that fight went so badly when Zandora ulted, she only got herself and one other person. No one else was in range. I feel like that could have been like a, I feel like that actually could have been, something in their favor that really might have turned the fight around. But by the time that everyone fully committed on deception as to who they were going to go on and hit, it just, it was already lost. Or 
ultimate's coming out, trying to get what damage he can, but it doesn't even look like he hits anybody with it, just uses it to get his way out of there, and we're back to 2020, sitting on our own points. Yep. And uh, someone in chat also brought up a good point. When Deception actually did finally fully commit and get on one target, I believe Gimmick's Margrave got all of them in his ground and bound. And just, it was, it was lost by then. Like, it was, there were so many things that were against that movement. I don't know what the idea was. <laughs> that was I, a little like, silly. It turned out really badly for them. I really like it if they just started hitting it. They they waited for the fight. They were, It's almost like they were like, oh, we want to take a fight, but we want to take it on G. We want, like, we want this positioning. Yep. And we can't force them to come to our A point, so we'll just go to G. Look at Margrave but, on gimmick side just sitting in the middle of the map, just not caring in the world. Like, no, <laughs> Empty had no thoughts, just not caring about the idea because they don't have any poke. He's literally in no danger just being in the open like that. The initiation might come, but I got my teammates on the cliff for me, buddy. Ru's just standing in the lightning. Yeah, in the lightning, in the, the snowball. He's, uh... He's wilding out right now. Sitting at this crossroads here with our teams just staring at each other. Mid collection. Uh oh. It sounds like Sarzi might have a little bit of a connection lag right now, but mid mid is coming up. I was I figured that's what he was about to say. And no obelisk this time to kind of stall on either side. So we don't really need to worry about that potential. It's gonna come down to who actually it makes is the up, first and move. No one's really uh Oh. Hello? Okay, there you are. Hello. I hear you. You roboted out for a little bit, yeah. but you're fine. I think that you're was fine. A, that now. was a quick one. Yeah, it was a good one. We're sitting at this uh at this kind of Mexican standoff of a D point. Yep. So this is this is one of those really rare situations where I'm actually not sure what'll happen when both teams capture. There have been no kills. And uh and the, the health bars are about even. So oh, here we go. Is this another full rotation to G we might be seeing? No, they're they're stopping at F this time. This is what they should have done last they're, they're time. They're starting to hit the creature. Big flame but on. Now with this F corridor, Charnock all does a lot of damage. They will find the two kills that they need before it actually happens, or rather the interrupt that they need yep. to make the push happen. But they can't actually get out. Yeah. So, so they will fall, making it 100 100, and maybe a bloomer afterwards. Yeah, Deception do but win the another push. push. Goes off anyway. Yeah, Deception winning another push, but with another 100 shield, I mean, at this rate, they're going to need, what, like 10? Like 10 consecutive pushes before it gets low enough to feel like they're ready to commit? Maybe maybe more like five or six. I'm being a little too, uh, being a little too uh, presumptuous there. But, like, the point being, the, this is, <laughs> I already thought it was going to be a long game. It's going to be an even longer, longer game. And, yeah. I mean, this is, this is gigantic when it comes down to it, you know. This is, uh, this when you're, is When a you're slog. playing for the power rotation. Yeah, everyone's on, everyone's level 10 on both teams, most likely. You know, we're just... We're just sitting and waiting. Like, come on, guys. We've got we've got three other series to watch right now. They probably already started. <laughs> they probably already started the winner's <laughs> final at this rate. They're probably just like, okay, we were going to give them a little bit of time to broadcast this. We're going to start an hour early. <laughs> and now, like, now they're just like, okay, how long are we going to, how long are we going to wait here? So, uh... Reading any good books recently, Wolfie? <laughs> no. I can tell you I can tell you maybe about what sort of projects I'm gonna be looking to do very soon. Yeah. Uh but before we get to that, might find a little bit of engage here. Now they're just gonna get out. Look like they tried. So my next idea right now will be a short series where I'm actually gonna do a map by map uh like kind of creature guide. My personal recommendations, oh, yeah, my personal recommendations on what I think are good creatures on what points and why. Ooh, Whoa. big focus on Nasus. We're looking for an Oru kill here. Nasus all will get popped for it, but he's already almost dead by the time that he gets out of there. That's a power differential now, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. If you so thought we were standing around before, oh boy, now we're standing around. So this is this is one of the few times that Gimmick has actually gotten a little bit ahead in, in a... Taking advantage, actually, of deception that are the ones that are 
uh, kind of sticking their nose a little too far. They tried to go for that kill, and it was a good idea. Like, Gnosis getting landing the gore, landing the focus, that Oru was very, very low, but no one else was really around, and Oru didn't even have to use focus. Nor Oru had enough, like, stamina just to run away. You know, the bleed wasn't enough damage to actually finish it off. And then they took advantage of the Gnosis just not having any more cooldowns to get out. That's the, that's the one yeah, you downfall know, Dave, of Gnosis. Dave raises a really good point. I want to remind everybody that if Gimmick wins this game, there is another game that we will be playing in this set. Exactly. So we're really, we're really playing for the long run here. Gimmick is going for game three here. And a big ultimate in the middle of the enemy team from Ace of Spades. He's trying to finish this game off with style and one HP trying to run away with oh. it. He will survive under Gren because the slam comes through. That and punch. now we're in danger here. We got to get out of here. No, nope, he'll no. fall. Yeah, he will fall. That's a, that's a really dangerous position to be trying to dive someone directly under Graves' forehead. And he actually, cap he actually captures before C gets a chance to even start like capturing as well. So uh, this is... This could possibly be a closeout for Gimmick. I think they want to try to win. They just used Charnockle. I don't know if Team Matt has ult up yet. They uh, but... did. Let's look at Team Matt if at all possible. No ult. Nope. Yeah, so no, they're not gonna go for it. They're not, yeah. And also the I mean Deception is kind of initiating on them to try to stop their DPS from going in. They do have the Charnock very low here, but he's kinda cutting towards his F point. Just... He will be found in the back. I mean Liren hasn't gotten up yet, so there's no power coming from that. And Roxasera saying, Oh come on guys, just kill me. You don't have to save me. No, they will. They will save you, Rox. No, gimmick wanna gimmick wanna win this and keep their their potential alive here. You know, deception deception are ahead in this game, and if gimmick loses this, they are completely out of the tournament. There's a lot on the line writing on this game right now, so uh, they they wanna play to at all advantages if at all possible. Slow and steady. <laughs> I think saving people in Gigantic might be one of my favorite, like, things that arises out of a meta in a video game, you know? Yeah. Where where you have someone at 1 HP and there's no way that they get out, but there's an actual reason to not kill them. And so you just sit there and they have to accept that they're already dead. <laughs> Dave! <laughs> like... <laughs> Sorry, I'm noticing in chat what Dave just said. That was really funny. Uh... <laughs> oh, man. This is, uh, this is, uh, I'm, I'm honestly running out of things to talk about. You know, you, you brought up earlier competitive League of Legends. This is like one of those, uh, this is like watching one of those games in LCK where there's just no kills happening. Or like the 80 minute Dota 2 game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like... Fight happening here. No one oh, no, lost like on either hours. side. Did you ever, it was like a three hour Chinese Dota 2 game. Yeah. That's, that sounds like a nightmare, especially for shoutcasters. Oh my god. Yeah, exactly. What in the world do you even talk about? So yeah, we saw a little bit of skirmish back and forth just a moment ago, but overall nothing actually getting or coming from it. Gimmick's still ahead, finding that one kill right after their, uh, their Guardian recovered. They're trying to pressure trying this, to actually. Up, but... Oh, Mark they did find another fall. kill. He's too big to hide behind that uh, Cyclops there. Yeah. Not, a bit, not a level 2 creature. Nice little clap onto the Gnosis, but not quite low enough to finish him off fully. The gimmick now ahead on a rotation. D is coming up, which means if they don't let it, if they make sure that Deception don't capture and it goes back to E and C, then they get the push here. It'll be... The ball is certainly in Deception's court at this point. They have to do something. Yeah. Deception have to make the move, and it looks like they are. And they will try. Paco is going to be oh, low on the dive, focus. but they're way in, and they're standing in the Charnock ultimate. Laundromat's already down at a quarter HP, and he's standing on, so on top of a Cyclops that will kill him by himself. Paco will use his ultimate on Roos to try to get his uh, other teammates out of there, but Roos will actually be flipped on, going down to a quarter HP and having to get out with his uh, with his jetpack. That, that Charnock flame on literally just saved that entire push. Like that did so much damage. If you, if, if again, if we had the replay, you would have seen that on on D point, one of the members of Deception were actually uh, capturing that point. That's how they have 80 power right now. But that Charnock did so much damage to them 
that they couldn't actually get out in time because they were all so low. They're going for this. They want to end. Yeah, this is going to be the end. Gimmick is going to win game two, sure. and we're going to a game three. <laughs> At least it won't be on Ghost Free. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So in game three of our best of three here between Deception, EU, and Gimmick, Deception's going to be on Orion's side this draft. Yep. And then Gimmick on... Uh, gimmick on the debater side. So what are we what are we thinking? What what what's the universal ban here? T Matt's a good on hover. Ember Grove? Yeah. Well, Imani's good, but it's not an Imani ban map, so we can we can save a ban on that. Oh they're already it looks like we have already done. Yeah, spends, they're fully spends locked in. Bans. Okay. Very fair. Uh gimmick seems to really not like this Sven. I think this is two I think this is two games in a row now that they've banned the Sven. They they saw it on the sirens, the Sven was just super helpful, and they're like, nah, no more. No more deception. No more Sven. It's very useful on Ember Grove. Uh, I think the jump pad is kinda underrated on this map. There's nowhere for you to not not really many places for you to jump up to, but yeah. But it covers so much your, ground. Right, increasing your jump height on Ember Grove with how many weird barriers there are in between places, it often saves you. You, you can jump off to somewhere where you'll be perfectly safe. Yep. So on Ember Grove, I had a bit of a conversation um, with a couple people in the last couple days. On Ember Grove, it's like there there seems to be this idea that you really want to try to stick together, if at all possible, and just have this team that can both stay together and push enemy objectives and if they and, and at the same time if they need to they can separate and there's a good amount of interrupts to kind of keep both sides uh to, to keep both sides covered so ember wood seems to really really value uh cc's kind of hit reactions <laughs> and that's okay uh, the Ezran was a little silly there. I figured that wouldn't be the case, but Margrave for sure. I mean, every every map is a Margrave map. Every team comp does well with Margrave. That's why he's the best tank. It just right. It's uncontested, you know. So gimmick, I'm not expecting a Zandora pick on this map. I think she's extremely weak on Ember Grove. Yeah. I am expecting a Margrave pick. Listen, on Ember Grove, the this map might have changed very recently mm -hmm. but we know what we're playing on this map okay this is a very like you don't you don't build a brawl comp but this is a very like brawly back and forth map where you're constantly going to be fighting you need some sort of strong uh healing presence on your team to keep you always in the fight you need some sort of tank who's gonna who's gonna soak up the damage and you need some sort of strong dps you can't on ember grove it's a little it's much more suspect to shake up the formula. Mm -hmm. So current Ezrin hover, I don't think that this will be locked in, but at the same time, I kind of understand the idea here. Um, Ezrin is very self-reliant, um, so he can kind of stay away from the rest of gimmick team. Uh, he can go and he can go in solo creatures if he needs to, but unfortunately he's also very, very slow at killing creatures. I don't think that they're really going to be using him to kind of pressure the other side of the of the midpoint. Um, I think more this hover might be under the idea that he'll stay on one side uh, and just kind of keep himself alive and try to delay the enemy from pushing uh, f f to uh, B. And I think it's I think it's F is the mirror of B. But no, a Charnak is much more likely. This is probably what will get locked in, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I like the the tempo of a character like Ezrin on mm -hmm. Ember Grove, where, where he's the kind of character who can always just be around 24-7. He doesn't ever really need to leave a fight, which is great for Ember Grove. Yeah. But I think the, the amount of pure damage that you get out of a Charnak definitely just makes him a more useful pick here. Yeah, so Margrave... I, <laughs> we get backtrack to the first pick, Margrave. I wish we had, like, a stats screen or something that everything's getting tracked over the course of the last three tournaments that we've done how many times how many times have margrave been first picked <laughs> it's easily the most first picked. Character. it's gotta be it's absolutely gotta be it's kind of nuts i feel like with the uh, i feel like with the non-ditto tournament there was some potential that team at might have been the most first picked but i still think even then like margrave was 
up there. Got a got a, a Griselma hover right now. This is probably, admittedly, this is probably one of her better maps because there are a lot of different ledges and wide spaces that you can put these Griselma hands, especially on those cliffs on either side of the side maps or the side points. Um, and I think a lot of people are f starting to really see the value of a Griselma hand cleanse because it can be triggered once every couple seconds. Okay, we don't want to keep giving Griselma praise. More likely going to be the Beckett here. Beckett's very, very good on this map. It's not really her best map, but Beckett is still just a really good character all around. I think it's like top two Beckett maps. Is honestly. it? Oh, okay, it's, really? Yeah, I think Ember Grove is a really, really good Beckett map. Mm. Her, uh, her jetpack is the right uh, distance to get her up on any of the ledges with one jump. Um, That's true. Her... Uh, her poison grenade, which I've been really coming around to recently. Smart grenade is awesome. The damage you get from it is so is like, if you just need like a wound killer who's gonna do as much damage as possible to one target and like explode them. Yeah, smart grenade is awesome. But the poison on this map, on the side points, literally covers the entire lower area. Like you can't go anywhere without going into it. That's very um, valid. She, I didn't think of that. She she's a very strong pick on this map, in my opinion. Yeah, and those hallways as well for the poison grenade. You know, kind of the hallways that lead to uh, kind of down the pathway, kind of towards your guardian or, yeah. or where the yeah. B points move post clash. That could also be covered a lot by the poison grenade. Uh, there's not really a reason to pick poison grenade yet so far, in my opinion, on the gimmick side, but it's it does possible. It does a surprising amount of damage and it brings you a daze. It's true. It's That's true. the reason that you pick it. Yeah. I, like it doesn't do as much damage as smart grenade. I, I would never be as crazy to say that. Yeah. But it still does a, a considerable amount of damage De for being a poison ability. Deception opting for a lot of damage right now with the Beckett and the Roland being confirmed locked in. I wonder what gimmick's answer is going to be. Um, Imani isn't banned. It's not her best map, like you said, but Lolaroos is on gimmick side, and Lolaroos loves his Imani. Uh, so there's a possibility here. Imani is also a really good pick against Beckett, considering if she goes airborne, then she's basically behind no cover. And uh, Lolaroos will line up those shots and snipe her out of the sky, quite literally. So... I, I would not be surprised to see Amani somewhere in this draft for gimmick side. I mean, I think right now the deception comp is looking like exactly what I want in, on an Ember Grove map. R Roland look, feels really gross on this map. Beckett feels really gross on this map. Beckett feels uh, uh, like even more so gross into this kind of uh, Margrave comp where they're go Ooh. always going to have somebody on the front line for you to hit. Mm -hmm. I think HK is a good answer to kind of Beckett Roland because the Roland's probably going slug shot here. Um, Moses is a good hover too, though. Those long range rail guns and get him out of the fight. I don't like Mozu. You don't like Mozu on this right now? Against the Not Beckett? into Beckett uh, Roland. I think those are two characters that actually kind of eat Mozu for breakfast. I mean, yeah, they have the big damage output to fight against her. You can't reflect, uh, you can't reflect or deflect Roland's Mega Blast, his focus. But I mean, the the like the drone shots would get deflected. His normal attacks would get deflected. Beckett's grenade would get deflected if it hits it on, on accident. I can kind of see what they're going for here. Um, and this is still just a hover, not yet confirmed. But I don't. I don't dislike it. I don't I don't think that this is the answer that they need yet. Again, one of those situations where you're sort of revealing the possibility of something. Uh, probably would have saved it for a little bit later if Deception ended up choosing one more ranged character, then yeah, I probably would have gone for it or considered it a little more than right now. But right now, I don't think you really need the Mozu. So I, I, I agree to you. I think Mozu some is arguably the best range character in the game when she's picked in the right games when when she is picked in the games where mozu is good she feels completely unstoppable like a like a range character that can play like an assassin that can also just have an a completely unbreakable defensive move that can sit there and and and, and beat your range like nothing even matters mm -hmm. but in the games where she's not amazing 
she looks bad. Yeah. I do think that this is a good uh I think this is a good map for Mozu as well, just because of those higher ledges and it's so easy to teleport to them because there's not really anything blocking you. Like there's so many wide spaces on this map that you can quite literally teleport exactly where you need to at any given time. Uh, so long as you're in range, obviously. But uh she, she you know, kind of kind of backtracking to those little narrow hallways between the center wall and, and the b-side wall you know she can sit on that far ledge and just do everything that she needs to do without any real like threat against her and a woo pick it's locked in all right mozu woo for gimmick yep woo is also a really strong good back line oh deception's ready to go the insta locks in on the ashlyn and the taito um I, honestly, I think this makes sense. Yeah. I like the Ashlyn pick because you have kind of uh, two kind of defined lines for your team where Kato can sit on. It can either sit on the front line and heal or sit on the back line and heal. Yeah. And Taito, I think, really efficiently answers these two range characters. Yeah, Taito's going to be a huge threat for these two casters. It'll force Mozu to teleport away. It'll force Charnock to kind of, uh, you know use either his Q or his RMB once he gets the push upgrade to basically use that for him and only him instead of defensively to kind of cover the enemy in incoming fire. Um, so Taito plays Does his Kimmich card Does Kimmich not have sure. a support player? I don't know, honestly. I feel like we haven't seen them pick a support at all. Um, but my memory is also a little fuzzy because yesterday was just really stressful with all the stalling that I had to do. Um, so no, I, I don't I don't necessarily think so. At least not a traditional support player. I know they have someone who's comfortable in Paco. I wouldn't mind Paco on this map right now. Um, the Ramsey hover is it's okay. I can kind of see doesn't, I can kind of see the reason for it, considering they have Ashlyn. That would reduce her healing Paco a lot. Doesn't Paco just like disappear into Ramsey or into uh, Roland Beckett? Sorta. I mean, I feel like it would be more of a defensive option, kind of to peel against the incoming like Margrave and Taito, and then leave like leave your Margrave to be the one that tries to get engages and pressure the enemy line. But that's just my opinion. That would be my idea. It would be like Margrave and Wu go in together. Paco stays back and protects Charnock and Mozu. Like that was my ideal situation. But Ramsey being locked in confirmed. I, I do, I do agree that this is a safe option. I think what they're looking for is the poison being able to be applied to as many people as possible, reduces Ashlyn's healing by a lot. It turns it from a thirty-five tick to like seventeen, which is very, very little. Um, and at least for how long does Ramsey's poison last? Like four seconds. That could really be a game changer. Watching. We are what is going on? We're spectating North Star. And we will turn on. <laughs> this is this is scuffed right now. So they're going for the Margrave now. He's one HP trying to make his way out. And he will not make his way out. Okay, they collected him at the end there. 70 to 80 for gimmick. Nice kills here, going trading back and forth with D being an adult uh, obelisk, so that obelisk. needs to be captured manually, or else, uh, Bro. or else North Star's team would have this right now. They're manually capturing on C. They have to stop that. There's a potential here, but someone has to capture now. Yeah, okay. Not, yeah. This will be fine. This was a. That's an interesting is... choice, but if it gets them the you push, missed... then by all means. You missed that gimmick had a had an ob planted on E, like, like their first creature. <laughs> like, yep. This is that's uh, crazy. This is interesting. I love that Northstar is playing Ashlyn. I don't think I've ever seen Northstar play Ashlyn, but he seems to be doing well so far with it. It is an auto wound. They've got still the adult obelisk on C or on D rather, and they're summoning a little bit of fighting happening on A. It looks like. Don't necessarily know there, what's going I mean, on over there. You can see how many creatures have died in this game. He's almost level eight, and they only had, Ooh. Sorry for that. They only had two pushes. Are you good? Okay. 
Yeah, something fell off my desk. I don't know. I, I have no fucking idea what it was. Woo. Well, either way, a lot of battle happening back here. Gimmick a little too far ahead, but it seems like they're able to really get out. Nope, not exactly. They find one kill. They trade back 30 to 30 even right now as the power rotation's moving on to the forward point. Oh, they do find another kill. Wu finding a kill onto the team at. Chasing after this yeah, Charnark. Charnark. Yeah, Charnark might be in a lot of danger here. He's got four players trying to follow him after. And that's a big Margrave jump. It will touch down. And Lucky Tiger falls. Slam dunk. Give us a sign, Banjax. Are we in? I don't think so. But I'm not sure. That's a huge one. The the obelisk is gonna fall with power under it. They're seventy to thirty for deception. Look at this difference. <laughs> deception is just so far ahead right now. It's not even funny. Ninety to thirty, co manually collecting the power on Ashlyn. She doesn't quite get it off, but they will get the kill at the end to finish the push. Gimmick once again losing a power race here. Uh, this is. Oh. Oh, he's lowering his volume. <laughs> Valid. Ah, they disabled spectators. I see. Ah. Uh, perhaps spectator was messing them up, which is fine. It's it's understandable. It is unfortunate that this is what we're forced to, but at least we can show something. And hopefully this game gets resolved super, super quickly. It, it seems as though Deception have fully, finally decided to actually lock in, and they're playing... Yeah, they wanted to give the Brawl Comp a test. They're playing well out of their mind. They don't actually fully confirm this wound. And lose Roland afterwards. Uh, two people, actually. Or sorry, they uh, a Deception lose two people. So now yeah. Gimmick is 20 ahead. They're forced to resummon this uh, Cyclops, which is a very smart choice. We all know that Cyclops oh, on sea. Oh, no. Uh, I, I saw it. Oh, Wu tried for a cliff, but cliffed himself. Ooh, a little bit of... A little bit of a lag there, I think, or oh, decent. I have an ad. Oh no! I have a minute and a half ad. It's okay. I'll 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 figure it out. Right now we're sitting twenty to sixty with gimmick having sixty, finding a little bit of a good team fight there at the C point, and that uh, Cyclops is quickly gonna die. There's no one else around. It looks like they're willing to let that be for a while. Moving over now to D, or at least three people on to D. Summoning another creature. It looks like that is also a Cyclops. And quickly moving to rotate for E while the other two teammates kind of distract at C right now. I'm not entirely sure how Wu and Margrave are still alive after all that. Uh, the creature does capture. They, doesn't qu they don't quite kill it in time. So it's going to be a push for Gimmick. Yeah, it's a big 50. one for Gimmick too. Yeah. It's actually their first rampage, so there's a good chance that they could technically make it even right now. Gren moving across, doing a little bit of his damaging moves over there. They get another kill, though, for 60. It seems like they're holding the defensive line fairly well. I don't know if Gimmick are really able to move in. It doesn't look like they yeah, are. Yeah, it's, it's really daunting to move past this Ashland Margrave because you have to walk through CC. Yeah. This is... Uh... Probably going to recover fairly easily. And there's going to be another five on five group scuffle over on the most important point on Sanctum Falls, the bridge. Quickly kill that creature. Nice job saving it until it got low. And they're being aggressive right now. Oh, the enemy team is over at D. This was a misplay by Gimmick, in my opinion. They're not going to be able to answer this fast enough. Yeah, they're they're very mispositioned here. The D is is, is an important point. They're going all the way gonna, in. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. They're actually going to be able to continue with this push. Gimmick now, needs to Ashlyn find an will... answer right now. Yeah, she, they're getting a lot of pressure on this Charnock. F is falling very quickly, and that's where the power is collected. That's what's important about this, is if they can kill his power point, which they do get a lot of power from their collection and kill the enemy creature. They're now 50 to 20. Ashen's got to get back to... in there, though. So so now Gimmick has to kill the enemy creature or, or kill the enemies on their point 
and then somehow collect the uh, the power that has been sitting there this whole time. Yep, they're not being just manually captured. They're not even resummoning, and it gets interrupted. There's the interrupt. They, yep. they probably should just summon another creature. But that's just my opinion. And they're actually now. There's two points. The North Star is collecting power. Yep. It didn't matter that three people actually ended up dying. <laughs> no one was able to stop him, and they just needed the twenty power. So might as well manually capture, right? <laughs> it's just taking, just taking power in their own base right under Gren's nose. And this is a yeah. I mean, going through to F there was a really nice play. That's what I was. I was immediately thinking, oh, they're way out of position. Go to F. Hundred percent not a wound, and we'll move into clash after this. Yeah. So D is open. We still have full control of C. We have replaced the Cerb or the Cyclops with a Cerberus, which I think is smart. The uh, Cyclops wall on C post clash is not very good. It's everything pre clash, not the best post clash in my honest opinion. So Cerberus is a fairly good option considering how much it moves. And they're here to defend. Nice position. Yeah, this. This is uh, starting to get harder and harder for Gimmick to break through this line now that they have this even more defensive point. And Ashlyn pretty much heals everybody when you're standing in that point. And just all the time. Oh, she's getting a little focused right now, though. Needs to be careful. Get out of there. Needs to get their way out. And uh, Northstar does find the little ledge here. This is my favorite little spot in all of Gigantic, I'm, I think, is that little ledge on the outside of that point of Sirens. Yep, so we're we're witnessing just the oppressive power of, of an Ashlyn who can keep herself and her team alive. Basically, at all times, the ticking healing just ramps up so quickly over the course of even just 10 seconds worth of healing is like around 350, almost 400 health. It, that's It's a lot, you know, it just, and the fact that it's so constant, it, you can have this longevity in fights that you don't otherwise see with the other supports in the game. We actually even saw earlier before that full fight even broke out, Kador died and Northstar actually opted just to use his focus just to get him back. Like not even use the focus aggressively for what the focus actually does quite literally to respawn Kador so that he could continue applying those benefits. And that's really smart. So, I mean, we're gimmicks in a pretty, uh, between a rock and a hard place at this point, they could plan on D uh it, that's a dangerous proposition because you're just giving it up for your opponent to potentially just kill the creature that uh, kill a creature that you can't defend i would have actually wouldn't have minded if they went for like an obelisk summon over there just to make sure yeah. that it wasn't fully neutral and open right now because Wu is just over there by himself like able to interrupt <laughs> he's just weaving in and out so fast interrupting every single manual capture now margaret's there it's gonna make it way harder and the, the, potentially the two of them can find, they even find somebody. They find a kill over there, according to the kill feed. If this goes on for any long, oh, they're just holding the power. Yeah. Yep, they just collect the power. Yeah. All right. 160 on this push. I don't think that they're going to go for an end here, but they could. It's it's possible they could position here. They have the, uh, they have the damage reduction, or rather the armor value that is providing damage reduction and the taking healing from Kador. They could position for this. I think they're actually going to give it a try. Yeah, I think you do go for this wound here with the level one team on roll, level one roll and all. I think you can totally do enough damage to it here, and they will be trying their best. The damage is starting to come in. You can see that that thing's starting to fall pretty quickly with the team at all slamming into it. Ashlyn gets into the middle to try to provide as much healing as she can, yeah. but only about a quarter of HP left on this wound, and their damage is done for. Team at falls, and Roland gets out without even pressing F. Yeah, they don't quite have to go to the another. job. Don't quite finish the job, and according to the kill feed, apparently Ashlyn is dead all the time. <laughs> kind of look at that top left corner. It's a little funny. Um, but yeah, this is a... Uh, it was very nice defense on gimmick, but still with control of C right now that Deception have, it's really only a matter of time. You know, it's going to be the same exact thing. But Ooh, Laundromat gets out on 1 HP. They're showing signs of life, though. They do kill the creature, but will they have been able to do enough pressure to stop Deception from getting uh, back in there and resummoning. I'd... Very hard to, and it to looks, really... Yeah, it looks like the answer is no. Of, this is the problem. One of the one of the problems with Sirens is once a team has control over the C point, it, it kind of all becomes this insurmountable effort to walk in there. 
Um, and you're just kind of poking, 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 hoping to push them back so that you can take control of it. Kator is dead. I repeat, Kator is dead. <laughs> but now he's back, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's just, it's ridiculous. I mean, the, the, blow, the, the, the trades are going blow for blow here. Like, we're still fairly even, but it's, it's in the favor of deception right now. Ace of Spades is a little bit too far in. They have wrested control of this point, and Ashlenald, for the first time in forever, is actually a little bit useless, knocks, or a little bit useful, knocks him against that wall for a little bit of CC. Ooh, that was scary. overall, he doesn't die. Yeah, they're not resummoning, which is pretty smart, because the, the gimmick is actually able to keep the pressure pretty strong here, so it would have just been most likely another creature just dying and giving more power over to their side, but they, there's still no control here. This is a very valuable point that they can't actually move in. And they need to have someone move over to D. Manually capture here. Oh no, he's summoning a he's summoning a Storm Drake. Or not Storm Drake, a, a, a Cyclops. Cyclops is amazing on this point pre-clash. Nice kill on the Margrave. And now this, if D ever collects, it's a push for them. Yeah, 100%. Now they, to, now they just interrupt E and wait for B to come through. There are so many win conditions on the board, and all they had to do was find one, and inevitably they did. Now it's 100 to 60. It's hard to imagine a world where this push doesn't go through. Maybe if Northstar dies to Gren, it can happen. <laughs> I don't think that'll be the case. Even if he does die, there's so much impact damage already being done. 70 shield wouldn't really make that much of a difference. And they just have to wait and move in. It is definitely under percent game. I mean, you saw on the mini map that D point going in and over there, uh, the Wu was over to move in by himself. And when they have to sacrifice one person just to grab that D point, uh, and Wu can stop them every single time, you know, when it's a 4v4 and you're still winning the C point like battle, it's basically just a done deal.